Unfiltered Podcast with hosts Mike D'Alessandro and Jeff Angelo. Unfiltered is based in Clark County, Washington, where we discuss news and politics with local leaders. This is Episode 8, Part 1, with our guest, State Representative Monica Stoner. Welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Mike D'Alessandro along with Jeff Angelo. Jeff, how's it going? It's going actually great today. I think uh, we have a lot of stuff to get covered and are the right person to cover it with. So a lot of stuff on my mind, though. That's um, a long list. <laughs> you know, the last time, so we did this with Mark Bolt, and you yeah. said it was my longest list I've ever had. Yeah. No. This is almost on par. I'm starting to think you're actually putting effort into this. You know, I, <laughs> I, I am, but towards the end. It's it like, like little, seven episodes, yeah, but we're after, there. after number four here, we're off topic, I'll be honest. Well, after fine. number four, it's just silliness. So, um, but with us today, we have uh, State Representative Monica Stonier. Monica, welcome. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Are you? I am. I am. <laughs> Wait about an hour. <laughs> I woke up this morning real excited. Okay. So, um, you know, just, I've, I've known Monica, we go back a ways, mm-hmm. and we know each other uh, personally, we, we're friendly with one another, we, we talk a little bit Mostly here friendly. There. Mostly friendly. There's a, there been a couple fist fights. Just a, f- just a couple. <laughs> just, just a, a couple. Just a fluffle or two. Just a fluffle? Is that, can we use that Pass, word? Passive aggressive texting. Passive aggressive texting. You know, oh my god. Okay, Monica's texting, I'll get to that in a little while. <laughs> There's some issues <laughs> I have with it. Um, yeah, I know that, nothing. I, was just, new, I don't know anything here. You know, I was just I'll write that, that down here. Monica's texting. All right, there we go. Okay. Now he's taking notes. This doesn't happen. I am. Well, there's just something that pokes in my mind from a little while back, and right. it still happens with her that I lose my mind with. Okay, but first we got to talk about um, some of the stuff going on with you. Um, number one, you recently had a town hall over at Clark College with uh, Senator Cleveland and Representative Wiley. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. What what went on there? What was the topics of discussion? What's everyone um, caring about right now? Yeah, so, you know, we have a couple issues that are hot on people's minds. Um, the repeal of the uh, affordable, or the Obamacare, <laughs> conversation about affordable, but, uh, you know, repeal of o- Obamacare at the federal level and, an op- opportunity to replace it with something that folks think could be helpful to um, our citizens has really brought a lot of concern. Our congresswoman voted against that uh, bill, and I would say probably because we had so many folks um, show up at her office and talk about how losing their health care was going to negatively impact their lives and, and you know, take them uh, out of a position yeah. where they could have access to that stuff. Mm-hmm. So to the to medicine and to doctor's appointments. And so, you know, our citizens had a lot to do with that. Um, so hmm. uh, that's that was one. You know, what are you going to do to protect our health care access? Uh, and then the, the other, of course, is the I-5 replacement bridge and the uh, bill that the governor signed last man. week. How many times have we talked about the bridge? Every so single podcast. I think every I think. single podcast. Everyone, no one wants to hear my ideas on it. My ideas are done with. They're they're sick of hearing about me and Pat Gelata with our ferry <laughs> project. Uh, we're we're going to take down that bridge and get the ferries out there. Five thousand bucks a car. I think that's what it was last time. Just don't tell them about two hundred five. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to keep it off their minds. But what's uh, so with the with the bridge here? What can be done? Because we lost Oregon. Yeah. The Oregon's not even talking to. I mean, there's going to be a lot of flowers sent over there. A lot of, I mean, a lot of tickle fests. A what lot of, the? I don't know, just something that brings someone to the table. I don't know. I worked with Mark Bolt, uh, so you know. Just to be clear, there was no tickle fest here with Mark Bolt. There was before the podcast. I'm not saying during the podcast. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, so. <laughs> What can we do? Because it seems like Oregon won't even come to the table. I mean, how yeah. do we even get that started? Well, first of all, you clearly have a like a wide array of lobbying strategies to get people to come to the table, Jeff. So mm-hmm. hats off to you for that. But um, I would say, you know, Oregon is interested in working with a Southwest Washington delegation and a Washington state legislature that's committed to this project. That hasn't been the case before. So now that we have, you know, presented a bill that the governor signed last week mm-hmm. that says we're willing to come to the table and talk about this. Oh, and by the way, the Democrats and the Republicans prioritize I-5 
Uh, and yes, that we, we could have discussions about other strategies, but prioritize I-5. That, I think, brings Oregon to the table. Does it make any sense? And I, I know I mentioned this um, a, a few um, weeks ago. We had Tim Levin on here. Mm-hmm. And we brought it up with him because I've been hearing some people talk about putting in a third bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, that's nonsensical. To me, that's, uh, you know, and uh, Tim said it too. You you can't get a third bridge in there. You go too far down, you're at the bridge of the gods. You go too far this way, you're just uh, might as well be in Astoria before you put in so another I, bridge. I bet you, Monica, you find this humorous that we have elected officials who think they're engineers. Oh, right. Cartographers. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, environmental uh, impact experts. Right. Um Right of acquisition experts, right of right away acquisition experts. I find it pretty funny. Well, I think once you're elected, you're supposed to be able to just know all the things. Know all the things. I don't. I, I you know. I, I don't. Didn't I'm not there happen? yet. Didn't I'm not that there happen yet. for I'm you? I'm not there yet. Well, I hate to say it. I'm I'm not elected, but I know everything. So <laughs> on the way. Well, no, that, I think that's the biggest problem we have is that we have elected officials who think that they are experts in areas where they are not. And, and that gets in the way of good work. And Senator Cleveland said this morning uh, that there's not infrastructure to connect multiple bridges to. There's just really, there's you can sure. you can build another bridge, but what are you going to connect it to? The we infrastructure is not in place, point. right? And so if we if we the same people who who say we need multiple bridges uh, over prioritizing the I five crossing are the same people that complain that the traffic on the Oregon side is the problem. Well, if there's not a plan in place to build infrastructure mm. for the multiple bridges, then how can they make that same argument when we're talking about prioritizing the main corridor we already have in place? So well, why yeah. not bring them to the table on the corridor and then start the conversation about infrastructure elsewhere? Yeah, it's a matter of practicality, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, we can replace the I-5 bridge uh, somewhat easier and watch it quicker mm-hmm. than we can building a new bridge. Oh. Right, the, uh, building a new bridge would not be done in any of our lifetimes here. I really don't think it would. Well, I, I think it, it just you've got to be happen. optimistic, man. Come on, I am so not optimistic when it comes to this bridge crap. Well, the entire South, I mean, well, most of the Southwest Washington delegation signed on to this. I think every jur- city did. Yeah, and I think like well, you're talking about happen? seven out of nine legislators signed on to this yeah. bill. Eight out of nine were at the meetings, right? Yeah, so, so. If you were to take that uh, proportion to any coffee shop, any restaurant, any community event, I think it would probably translate, you know, well, almost any community event, depending on which one it is. But I would say population wise, you're still talking about a broad majority saying, please prioritize the I-5 crossing and then you'll have some outliers that are going to. Have always, a different opinion, which is always fine. Always have the outliers. Well, you're, one, you're one of them. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I want the fairies. Uh, so <laughs> what are the outliers even saying? Like, what's what's their defense for not wanting a bridge at this point? It's almost like it's more about not the I-5 crossing and mm. the other bridges are the default. Because even talking about the other bridges, they can't follow that down the infrastructure question, the Oregon coming to the table question. Um, it's more about opposing an I-5 crossing so me, than it is about their solution. So Oregon legislature is looking or possibly could look at imposing tolls on the other side of the river on 205, I-5, I mm-hmm. believe I'm correct, both 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 highways, both freeways. So the people that oppose, I'm trying to backtrack here, most of the people that oppose the former CRC project uh, opposed tolling as a philo- in general ph- mm-hmm. philosophical opposition, right? But they always did complain about the corridor, the Rose Quarter. I was here, well, we, the bridge isn't going to be a success because of the mm-hmm. Rose Quarter. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work. Well, now this funding option of tolling in Oregon is going to put money out there to fix the Rose yeah. Quarter, right? So are these same people going to be okay with a new replacement bridge if tolls are in place on the other side to take care of the congestion problem that they say is the, the heart of this entire problem? Yeah, so that's I, I don't I don't think they will be, but um <laughs> That's an interesting thought. So as you're saying that, I'm thinking, okay, so maybe if we can improve the quality uh and access to healthcare and have people avoid using the emergency room uh for their primary care, the savings to the federal government from that can go to 
building infrastructure like the I-5 crossing, which would then would alleviate the need for tolls. Well, I was thinking we'd use it to build a wall, but um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's almost like you two are elected officials. <laughs> almost. Just, we can talk soccer, c- just, circles around you, man. Just right about Tip, there. Tiptoe around the issue. No problem. <laughs> oh, boy. No, it, it is, it's just, it's, there's an amount of, of and I think you're right, it's yeah. ideology. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there is some partisan stuff going on there, too. But but I am I am somewhat inspired by the fact that we've had such a a, a groundswell here of, of bipartisan support of looking at the, doing something. Yeah. Almost. Putting aside the bipartisan the, I know. support. Almost. Well, but I mean, if you back up from the short. issue by itself, if you back up from the bridge issue, mm-hmm. people mostly want to know that their elected officials are going to work together to get something done exactly. for the ben- yep. betterment of the community. Yep. And that is what has happened in this last several months. The government side, uh, the governor signed a bill that shows that government can work in that direction. And I think people care more about that than they do about the minutia of, you know, what the transportation solutions are going to be. They're just going to have more faith in government if people can work together and get things done. So here's a good question for you. Why is Olympia so dysfunctional? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I'm just a, curious what your take is. Why? why is, is spend it, a whole podcast well, on Well, come that. on. We, it's we, where we, we're we have a limited amount of time, right? <clears throat> we've, got, we've got this delegation in Southwest Washington focused on an issue that is important to mm-hmm. the region. And honestly, I think to, to more than just our region, yeah. but to our specific region, and they can work on this issue here, but then we get to Olympia and it's boom, it's RD, to, You know, RD, to me, RD. it's a it's a deck chairs issue. I don't think it is RD, RD. I mean, okay. the, 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 the Republicans in the House and the Democrats in the House are far more collaborative, far more on the same page, voting together on bipartisan bills and issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, when When you get to the Senate side, it is very partisan and it almost becomes very frustrating because it turns into a House versus Senate issue mm. with the shouldering of that burden being on the Republicans to fight it out between themselves about where they're going to land on some things. Okay. I mean, so, you know, I ran against Paul Harris in 2010 and lost to him by a landslide. Um, and so we had a rocky start in our professional work. Mm-hmm. After that, I was a seatmate with him. And, mm-hmm. and now he and I are both on health care and both on education together. I can't even think of bills. Well, maybe there's just a small handful of bills where we didn't vote the same. I mean, we are the House Republicans and the House Democrats, when it comes to issues that are not partisan and things that matter to the community, Mm -hmm. are much more collaborative. Hmm. So I think the dysfunction is a matter of deck chairs. Who's in leadership in Republican Senate? That is the problem. Hmm. You have people in leadership killing bills that the majority of the Republican caucus would vote for if we'd come up for a vote. That's very partisan. It gets in the way of work. Um, Interesting. You have others that, you know, try to kind of negotiate between one side and the other and that are building relationships on both sides. But in the end, if your majority leader or, you know, the chair of a committee doesn't want to see something move, they're the ones who are in that chair on that deck at that time. Uh, So the dysfunction, I lay at the feet of Republican leadership in the Senate. Hmm. And yeah, I don't even it. think that the thinking of those folks reflects their caucus. So, as long as they don't kill my favorite bill up there, then we're all is that oh. the fairy one? No, 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 no. The <laughs> Sasqu- <laughs> Sasquatch. Bill. Oh, the Sasquatch yeah. bill, right? Yeah, that's yeah, uh, that's just that's been. I've defended that the entire time. I've uh, been a staunch I've, defender of that bill. I say defended it, but I, I there's you know a neat story to it. There um, is a neat yeah, story to it. We've talked about it a little bit in here, and I'm I definitely. Um, my hats were off to... How many uh, hats do you have? I have 17. 17 hats. So, oh, wow. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> Prime real, sponsor that bill again? What? Prime sponsor that bill? Who, who has that bill? It was Rivers. Rivers? Yeah. 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 Rivers has the bill. <laughs> she has my support on that bill. <laughs> on that bill. <laughs> on that, on You're that trying bill. to think on that bill? Yeah. So real, backing up just for a second um, to this health care issue. Um, because, uh, the, the bridge, the, we popped up with the bridge and went on that for a little bit. Uh, what, what are we going to do about this healthcare? What's, what's our methodology here? How do we proceed forward? You said what, people what were concerned we about it. So. Yeah, people were concerned about it. So what do they want you to do? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we passed the Medicare, Medicaid expansion several years ago. I was in the legislature and had a chance to, to vote for that, drawing down dollars from the federal government to make sure people have access to health care. Mm-hmm. That was huge, right? And that's huge for not just the state, but many across the country. Um, and so I think that the challenge we have now is the way 
the new health care bills come through the legislature rather than be, being very thoughtlessly pushed through the way the president tried to do it the first time around where he's just buying off votes left and right without with cobbling together whatever would buy those votes and not mm-hmm. necessarily having a thoughtful policy to put forward. Um, there's a, that's why it failed in the past. And so now, you know, I think we're going to have to weigh in more as a state. And and that is not just the citizens are doing their part and they need to certainly not back off, but ramp it up. But the state legislators also have to be in communication with the federal government about mm-hmm. what it means for their constituents. So if you have, you know, a Republican in the House or in the Senate, um, in any state across this country, it is the leaders of the legislative districts, the elected officials in the legislative districts that have the responsibility of getting their constituents fired up and communicating to make sure people understand what the impact is going to be if they vote on that bill. Jamie Herrera voted against this last mm-hmm. um replacement bill because she knew how many of her constituents were going to lose access to health care because constituents weighed in. And so to the extent that we can be helpful in that, Mm -hmm. that's the step, first step. The second step is, you know, what policy changes can we make at a state level that helps alleviate some of this? You know, making sure people have access to birth control for 12 months instead of having to go back to the doctor every month. Making sure that people can, um, you know, access community health centers uh, around the state that are funded uh, in a way that provides services to people that aren't on any other kind of Hmm. um, program. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Making sure that kids have access to early dental care so that that can be the entry point to finding out what other healthcare issues that they might have and putting them in place. Hmm. Um, You know, those, those things that we can kind of back up and look at at a state level is Mm -hmm. what we're watching. We're trying to figure out how to be the backstop for what's happening at the federal level. Um, And, and I, you know, I think that's, they may not know that that's what, our, where our entry point is, but that's what we're trying to communicate. We're trying to be the backstop to the extent that we can. So the so the people at the at the town hall were they lo- looking to you guys for answers um, or and or support both together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and you know, like where are you on yeah. um, on single payer? Like mm-hmm. they 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 have some conceptual ideas in mind that provide health care to all, but the key point is health care for all, right? Well, so like that's, you, so that's the did, value that people are did asking. Did you have us. anybody show up that said that they are for the proposed plan that's been passed through the House, the U.S. House? If they showed up, they didn't write a card. <laughs> So okay. <laughs> I have yet to come across a person who thinks it's a good plan. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't think you will. I think it's an awful plan. And I'm not talking just about, you know, talking to just, you know, progressives or liberals. I'm no. talking about people who are just I think you, you know, could walk to Idaho and still not hear a well, peep to it. Well, Idaho is a red. Red. Well, It's a long talk. walk too. It's, it's a long walk. walk. It's, it's seriously a long walk. I mean, walk. there's not a lot of people along that walk, so you it's might close. you might make it. I'd get bored. I'd get bored. Mile two, I'd be bored. I'd turn around and come back. Enough of that. Yeah, enough. That is a stupid <laughs> choice, Jeff. What's wrong with you? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, getting, okay, let's, let's move on. Cause right now you're in a special session. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you explain what that means, first of all? Yeah. So a special session is that you don't have an operating budget. You don't have a way to fund the things the state needs to do at the end of session, which is your job to pass that. Then, you know, the governor will call a special session to give you more time to do it. Usually it comes with, you know, a little bit of press um, backlash about how the legislature isn't getting their work done. And this time he, you know, rightfully pointed his finger at the Senate Republicans that are unwilling mm-hmm. to come to the table and negotiate. Their plan is for negotiating is, you know, Come sit down at the table. Um, are you ready to pass our property tax? That's another regressive tax in order to pay for some things, but also all of our cuts that are going to, you know, kind of pay for everything too. And we say no, and then mm-hmm. they get up and leave. So there's mm-hmm. not really a give and take. It's okay. more about, are you going to do our plan or not? And if the answer is no, because we think that hurts Washingtonians, um, then they leave and there's, there's not a longer conversation about it. That's the way it's been going. Mm-hmm. That's why we're in special session. So if we're not done by, uh, what I understand will be like May 24th is the end. May 24th or 23rd is the end of this special session. Oh, then we then birthday. there's a potential for another 30, 30 day special oh, session. Boy. You think it'll be 30 days special session? You know, no. if we, if there's a, if there's, if you can sniff out a deal before then, then they can do a shorter special session just to get things done. Yeah. Um, I, if they, if they come forward and say another 30 <clears throat> session, 30 day session, then, you know, the implication is. Mm, they're going to need all the time they can get to get. You know, I I did talk to Senator Cleveland like a couple days ago, and I was just asking her about that a little bit. And she's like, oh, my guess is it won't happen until the 11th hour. 
it'll be right there, right before. Um, is it July 1st? That's when stuff starts. Uh, That's when government starts shutting down. Yeah. Yep. No, we talked about this also with Tim when he was on too. Yeah. And I brought up, oh, it's July 1st when the budget starts shutting down. So I hope I, during when we talked to him, I also said, oh, I talked with Monica right before that. That's how I got this information. Jeff's so <laughs> name dropper. <laughs> Such a name dropper. I I had to. Well, because I I know Tim would have been smart enough to be like, you didn't know that. Well, see, I actually thought you knew that. No way. And then you had to go and admit it that you didn't know it. I thought you'd been paying attention. From the state level, it was Monica. If it's city, it was Tim. (laughs) Oh, okay. I'm not that smart. (laughs) So, um, so... I know you're you're very big with the education mm-hmm. stuff. What's happening right now, education? What do you have going on there? Uh, so me personally, I'm working on making sure that our poor kids who don't have access to food during the day can have some access to food so that they can learn so that we can then continue to push the high expectations we have in the classroom for kids. I'm trying to make sure kids can graduate. Our state test is getting in the way. Mm-hmm. Our graduation credits are getting in the way. Uh, we're, we're putting a lot of barriers in the way of kids, in particular, um, kids of color and kids in poverty. Um, I'm working on trying to, we have a, a bill, uh, that will come forward in the operating budget, uh, to implement the budget that is a teacher recruit, recruiting and retain and retaining bill that, uh, removes some of the barriers that teachers are facing that get push them out of the profession. Um, so we're working on things like in, in that, in that area when it comes to K-12 education, um, also on the capital budget side, I'm working, I'm going to be on a, um, I understand I'll be on a work group that reconstructs how uh, school construction um, dollars are spent. Mm-hmm. And so our schools that have not been able to access uh, state level funding mm-hmm. for building new schools or for um, rebuilding current schools will have um you know, a better, a better foothold in that process, hopefully. Uh, so that's what I'm working on on state level. You know, we're working on, I, re- I mentioned it's not that much, I mean, not, it's not just, too much, not too things. much. Um, I, on this seems easy the, I feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, representative Paula Harris is on the education task force. So, mm-hmm. you know, those who are on that task force are meeting pretty regularly right now to try and negotiate the final deal for what, um, when we fund schools, what will be in the policy level. And, you know, I'm, I've been fortunate to work with him and we, we agree on what needs to happen in terms of graduation requirements and what needs to happen in terms of, um, you know, state testing and things Mm -hmm. like that being used as a barrier. So some of the policy things that I care a lot about and some of the things that I actually ran for office in order to Mm -hmm. try and fix, Mm -hmm. Um, I'm hopeful we'll continue if, even if they're not passed in this year, we've made such considerable traction in just the conversation that we could see some policy changes down the way, um, that, that benefit our kids. Um, so, you know, K-12 is a big world. Uh, And right now with the headlines and the McCleary decision, I mean, we just got a lot on the table. It's going to require some funding. And, you know, the, the question we have before us is how are we going to fund it? Are we going to fund it on the backs of you know, middle and lower class and small businesses the way we have been, or are we going to, you know, have the guts to restructure that and, and have a more equitable, um, revenue process. Mm. Oh my, that's so much to process in that amount of time. So something Mike and I talked about, and I guess this uh, is a good way to transition. We were talking about, um, you know, I, I spent a little time in Olympia, mm-hmm. uh, not, and you know that, and not a whole lot of other people knew that, but Mike knew that as well. And we were like, yeah, we should talk about your experience up there. And I went up there, and first of all, I have to say, yeah, hands down, you're like the busiest person out there. Like I saw other people I knew from our community, uh, other legislators. Up yeah, there. don't 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 bad yeah, mouth. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, eating lunch, like they're reading a book. Just spending some time like, sitting under like, a tree, hanging out, uh, you know, no, playing <laughs> kickball to some extent. Um, <laughs> d- yeah, uh, you, you definitely, you know, I yeah. came up there and um, I had a great time with you. I mean, first of people all, people aren't running around frantic the whole time. <laughs> oh, some yeah. are. You are. Yeah, you are. Every every time I see you, it's uh, you have something. It's it's nonstop. It's a mm. very fast pace. And uh, I got up there. Fortunately, when I went up, it was on a Sunday. And so um, it was a tiny bit more relaxed. 
And but you were still you were still working. You were still working. <laughs> if I was there. there on a Sunday, it was because I was at a thing that I had to it was, be at. It was not right. At home. It was right before um, MLK. Mm. And um, and first of all, I have to thank you because you gave me just such an awesome backroom tour up there, and mm-hmm. it was it was great seeing all that stuff. And then uh, I got to uh, was felt privileged enough. To accompany you to uh, a speech you gave to Western Washington students, yeah. if I remember correctly. Right, yeah, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it was great, but you are just always on. It's a constant thing with you. and uh, But I got so much out of it. I, and I came back a few a few other times because mm-hmm. I was highly interested in the process. Yeah. The way I had to stop being interested in the process was a story between myself and my son. Uh, there was some craziness that happened at home, so I've been put on hold for the time being. But And, and you know the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but, my God, you know, your your husband said something to me a while back when I was on the phone with him. Uh, that it's stuck in my mind ever since he said it. And he said, you know, there's two types of people up in Olympia. There's the show horse and there's the workhorse. <laughs> and uh, he's like, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't even need to tell you what type Monica is. And it is like, she is the workiest of horses. Workiest. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's a word in reality. Um, it's in Webster's, don't worry. Yeah, it's, it's on there. Come on, man. Uh, but... You know, you do such a great job, and you really hit the ground running again because you're you're back there again now, and it's uh, it's just awesome. I mean, it's incredible, and and you always say, "Oh, I wish I had more time for you." I never think that way when I'm out there because I know you're so busy. <laughs> right. Well, you know, Jeff. First of all, thank you. That's very. Um, it's good. It's you know, I appreciate the compliment, but I think the part of the reason why I was trying to make time when you were there, and this is true for you know anybody who's been up there visiting and kind of makes a connection with me to let me know that they're there to try and learn. Um, it's maybe it's just the teacher in me, but anything I can do to help people understand how government is supposed to work on their behalf, yeah, really serves us all. And so anytime I mean, somebody is on their way up there and wants to know, like, what can I see that's going to matter to me? What can I? I mean, I tried to ask, like, well, what is it that you want? to see what is it that you're going to want to do in the future so i can try and direct you in that and, way. and you're right we did have those conversations yeah, so i think we, that's that's multiple, the key that's the multiple. key is knowing knowing what you want to know about when you get to olympia i'm i'm more than happy to help kind of direct that learning and give people some access to government um I mean, that's, you know, I had to learn uh, by running for office and then serving um, and then running again and then serving. But the reason, but I knew what I was going there for. I was tired of the state law getting in the way of kids learning Mm, and the passion that teachers have for teaching. Um, And that opened the door for me to work on a hundred million other things that I love working on. So, um, you know, it's always about the gateway. It's always about the gateway Mm. to the next several chapters of what you could do. So anytime I can be helpful to somebody kind of learning those next steps. No, I, it, it was great because you kind of uh, guided me a little bit. And then once I got a little more comfortable, I found the stuff that I Didn't you actually for. even pretend to be a lobbyist in the lunch? Don't. What, oh, are we even supposed to talk about dude. this? <laughs> I didn't know this. Why did you bring that up? I don't know. Oh, my God. I just thought it was the funniest I... thing. There's a lot of fake it till you make it in Olympia. Oh, my God. And I felt like... It's just... It was a true... She's, it's a true statement. She's okay, so what were you lobbying? What were you supposed to be this lobbyist for? Oh, my God. No, no. I didn't even so know if it was a lobbyist. Version. It was just, like, maybe an advocate or pretty much anybody. Someone, someone just saw me sitting up there one day. And actually, there's two stories. And I'll give the first one, then the second one. And I was just eating lunch. And I had... I had a Wearing a blazer. Like, I, was, I was dressed playing up the part. All right, all right. Usually, I'm in shorts, so when I'm dressed up, I mean, people get confused. <laughs> yeah. Even people who've never seen me before, yeah. they're like, "That guy looks like he wears shorts all day. He must do something up here." And yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of assumption up there. There really is. Mm-hmm. And I was just eating lunch, and they were sitting down and talking about this. And I, I don't know why. I don't know. Well, I do know why. It's me. And <laughs> I just I leaned over. I said like two words. They were talking about trying to talk to this person or that person. And Mm -hmm. they brought up um, Representative Vic. Oh, yeah. And from there, I was like, oh, well, let's see what's going on here. And I was like, oh, if you guys saw, I can probably, you know, help you out. I don't know why I inserted myself in that conversation. But I'll tell you what. 
I learned a lot. <laughs> they taught me a lot. They didn't even realize it. They And I went back to Monica afterwards, and I told her kind of what wow. had happened. These people are looking to present a bill, and they're, like, looking at the blue forms or mm-hmm. whatever blue forms. Sheets, blue yeah. sheets, <laughs> and, and they're trying to take them around. And, and every time that they said, well, we just got to take our blue sheets, I was like, yeah, blue sheets, so that's a good thing. You got to take those and get those. I had no idea what they were talking about. You should have told them to go for the orange sheets. <laughs> And then I said, oh, you're like, wait, we don't even know about the orange sheets. (laughs) Now you do. Somebody get that guy's card. (laughs) And then uh, I don't don't know why. I was like, yeah, you should just go the education meeting. That's a little bit here. And uh, I'm going that. And the girl showed up in the room. There was no reason to. I was just BSing my way through it. So, yeah, I actually learned a lot. And I told you that. And, yeah, it was definitely It's great. I didn't think you would remember that. Oh, of course I remember because I was so entertained. Because the point is there's so much work to do. And and, and when people show up and they're doing some work there, you know, you can find plenty of things to work on. And I just thought it was funny that you just like found a very natural, <laughs> quick network. It was the weirdest thing in the world. It was, oh, it was great though. It was great. The other one too was, um, they had, I went up, uh, and this was, I think the same MLK trip where yeah. I first went up there with you and, um, they had the Planned Parenthood was there mm-hmm. and the teacher unions were there. Mm-hmm. And I went down, I was with the teacher unions, I was all dressed up. They mistook me for Brandon Vick. So apparently, Whoa. there's some similarity. <laughs> but afterwards, they're like, oh, well, thank you for coming out and walking with. I was like, no problem. And one person said, oh, yeah, it's Representative Vick. <laughs> and because I, I was walking with the 18th. And I was oh, like, okay. all right. And so I don't know why, why. Awesome. I, I didn't correct them. I didn't, I heard them I don't know why I didn't correct him, he just and said. I just, I don't know why, I just <laughs> let him think it, I love it. And then I they're like, can we why. all take a picture together? I was like, of course. So they got this <laughs> picture <laughs> hanging up on the wall. <laughs> they were, yeah, yeah, wrong person, wrong person. I hope they never make You better let him know that. Oh, my God. I, well, Br- he probably got some weird thank you note Brandon, or something. Uh, like, Brandon well, knows I never did both this. Too I think he, I think man. he would think it's a really hilarious story. Uh, uh, Brandon has a good sense of humor. He really does. Yeah. I can't believe you remember that. I yeah. forgot about it. I honestly forgot about it. I would never have brought it up here, though, to be honest with you. It's a well, great you're idea welcome. when you're Olympia, You're though. welcome. Yeah. Just... It was, I learned something new. And and you know what? The one thing every time I go up there that you say to me, 100%, like I, the one thing I always hear you say to me is, what did you learn today? <laughs> it's 100%. You Sounds like that. a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, right. you do though. Do you not say I, that? You I'm say every sure that time. I do because yeah. that's all. That's what I ask teachers I'm working with on a professional development level there too. Is always like, what did you learn? What did you take away from today? How are you going to use oh, this yeah, tomorrow? Yeah. It is every time and immediately. I'm How like to be a, a lobbyist kid. in Olympia? You know? How to be a lobbyist? I'm yeah. Act like you know what you're talking about and wear a blazer. And wear a blazer. It, it works. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. Anyone who's wanted to do this can just go up and start. Oh, that's so good. It's a free service at first, but you could turn it into something. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> God, um, let's let's go. Okay, I don't We're have any stories like people. this. I'm jealous. I, you know, I create these coming stories out. He has he has these stories every show. He has a, some story like that about. Something. I didn't bring up this story though. That was on Monica here. That was I, I wouldn't have remembered that story. I live a sheltered life. It's <laughs> it's one of my do. favorites. Like Are just I could just I'm just in my mind's eye <laughs> thinking about. Jeff I, eating yeah. lunch in the Dome Deli in a blazer, not in shorts, really? oh, yeah. and leaning yeah. over to be like, hey, what are you, what bill are you working on? And then... It was hook, line, sinker right then. It was Next done. thing you know, they're in the same committee, you know, two yeah. hours later. Uh, next thing you know, I'm going to be sitting next to you on the education committee, and people are like, oh, yeah, well, he's with us. So you're just going to be like... <laughs> it's Representative Vic. <laughs> it's Representative Vic. He shaved today. So... <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, it, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it, there's so much stuff that happens up there, though. Yeah, some stories. All it is busy. It. It's a busy place, and I'm very comfortable in busy places. So, yeah. Which is good. Which is good. Um, apparently, if you things. don't want it to be busy, you can just sit in your office and read books. I didn't know that was an option. Or play kickball, apparently. It was kickball. one person, and I went over and said hello to him. Um, but it's someone we know locally. Okay. Uh, and uh, I just realized, you know, he has a thick book in his hand. And apparently he has two hours to kill. And I was just like, oh my God, is this Daniel this, Steele he's reading? This, this, was, kinda... this was after Don Ben left the center, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to narrow it down here. So we're not talking about... <laughs> what, no, no, no. Okay, okay. This, this, was, this, was, this was post-Don Ben. Don, Don didn't... 
Senator Benton didn't have time to read books. He was oh. running for camera lights. That's yeah, like not. wherever the media was. That's oh, where he was and don't be afraid. To me, it's just dumb. Listen next week for the second part of our discussion with Monica Stonier.